Welcome to the Working Without Waste podcast, powered by ERC Midwest, the podcast that's all about sharing ideas and stories that increase your productivity and decrease waste in your business and personal life. I'm your host, Mike Malatesta, one of the leaders here at ERC Midwest. And today's guest is Anna Kraft. Anna, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Mike. Yeah, well, it's it's our pleasure, and and, and um, you guys are in for a treat today because Anna is the founder and CEO of Xena Workwear, uh, the maker of stylish, comfortable, and responsibly made safety footwear for women. So, like a lot of what I like about her story, like a lot of entrepreneurs, Anna started her company because she was frustrated, and she wanted something that she couldn't get, she couldn't find something she needed but couldn't find. And she decided to take that problem into her own hands and solve the problem for herself and for women, I guess, all over the world who are facing a very similar problem. So with that, um, Anna, tell us about how you came up with the idea for your company and how you got it started. Yeah. Um, I... Um, I usually say I never plan to go into footwear manufacturing. I have a degree in international project engineering from Germany and always worked in the manufacturing space. And uh, while I love my work in the manufacturing industry, I was so incredibly frustrated by the safety shoe options. I always felt like a clown wearing my, uh, my clunky boots that were designed for men. I had multiple pairs that I really hated to wear and that, did not help me to feel confident. And um, the, the biggest challenge was when I had to transition between the office setting and the shop floor. I was running multi-million dollar projects and had to dress professionally in the meeting room. And then as soon as we would wrap up the meeting, we all would go out on the shop floor and I was the only one who had to run back to my desk and grab my clunky boots. Uh-huh. So after, after years of frustration, I decided to do something about it and created... Um, created a safety shoe that professional women would love to wear. So yeah, it basically started out of my own frustration working in the space. And so like a lot of frustrations, we tend to put up with them for a long time, you know, because the pain is probably less to put up with the frustration than, than the effort that's put into getting over it. And evidently, at least in your case, it got to a point where um, that was no longer the case. What what happened, or when you know what was the trigger for you to say enough's enough? Um, let's see. I was I was doing a lot of research. Um, so I was complaining about this problem for many years, and then the, it came to a point where m- multiple things um, started to get together. One thing was I. I was tired of the clunky safety shoes. Another point was that I um, I just finished one of my biggest projects at the company, which was incredibly exciting. We had a successful uh, product uh, project end. And then my work started to get a little bit boring. I was still get got paid for not having a lot to do. And I hated to sit at my desk and feeling like I'm not doing anything exciting. I'm not contributing to to society or my company or anyone. I, I hated the feeling of being useless. And I thought I could be doing so much, so many things <laughs> in my life and started to explore the idea of starting my own business. And after uh, brainstorming different ideas, um, like we uh, went up north, swatted out a bunch of different business ideas and basically narrowed it down to the safety shoe problem because I thought, there's definitely a need. My friends and I have been complaining about this for many years. And uh, now it's like it can be rocket science. I, w- I have an engineering degree. I may not know everything, but I can find the right people who can help me make this happen. Okay. And, and how did you get started? Like, what was the first? Take us through the steps, because I'm really interested in how, I'm always interested in how someone sees a problem and and wants to fix it or make it better, but doesn't know exactly how to go to connect all the dots in order to make that that happen. Yeah, the the first step was to 
learn everything possible about the American safety standards. So I did not, uh, uh, of course, I had experience wearing safety shoes, but I did not understand every single um, type of certification. So the first step was to educate myself about safety standards. And then um, um, after I found a designer, we created the tech pack on paper. And in parallel, of course, I started writing a business plan. I started to un- like do some research to understanding how big is the market size? Is there really a need for this? I started conducting multiple focus groups here in the area. We live in Milwaukee and there's so much manufacturing in the Midwest in general. So we, I met with women from Rockwell Automation, Harley Davidson. Um, there's so many different manufacturing companies here. So started gathering information about what, what do they need? What specifications their companies have? And uh, sorry for the sorry for the background noise. No, it's fine. You're good. I don't hear anything. Okay, good. Um, yeah, and that helped us to create the design that we then took to the manufacturer and started working with them on creating multiple prototypes. And I, I'm, I don't know if it's the German part of me, but I'm, I'm a perfectionist. So it took us five or six rounds of prototypes to finally get to the design that I felt comfortable with, that I really liked. And we send it in for ESDM testing, which needs to happen in the, at an independent lab in the United States. And in May of 2019, we launch, officially launched Cena Workwear. And when you first, um, well, first of all, the women that you that you went and interviewed, sort of your focus groups and, you know, sort of proof of concept, like, is this something that's really needed? Was there anyone who said, ah, oh, you know, pretty happy with what's out there, what I can get at Foot Locker or wherever? Or was it sort of universal? Everyone's like, oh, my gosh, please solve this problem for me. I would say 95% of women said, I hate my boots. And <laughs> so that, okay, women are, hate their boots right now. Like, there's such a big chance like there's so much potential for improvement like having uh, and by now having a boot that women love to wear safety shoe that women love to wear not only to work but also wear them in their free time like even going to a happy hour or a dinner with clients uh this is so impressive so the majority of women said yes please i've been looking for a nicer safety shoe for years more comfortable and nicer yeah, so something whole, that they something that they don't have to put on and take off. They can just put them on and wear them. Yeah, and, and yeah, everybody. exactly. The design is one aspect of it, and the comfort and safety is the other. Um, so many companies apply the shrink it and pink it concept, where they take a men's boot, make it smaller, and make it pink. But uh, men's and women's feet are so different. Um, like it's, I was I was always tripping over my boots because they were clearly not designed for a woman's foot. And uh, I sometimes it's even a safety hazard if you don't have properly fitting PPE. If your safety vest is too loose, you can get um, get stuck in, yeah. in machinery. Or if your shoes don't fit properly, it uh, can sometimes even be a safety hazard. I like that shrink it and pink it. I, that's that's funny. Um, that's definitely a guy's mentality right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And, and a pink boot did not help me feel confident in a room full of seasoned engineers who um, like who, who I collaborated with on highly critical projects. So what you wear definitely has an impact on your confidence and how you enjoy work. And I just wanted to remove this unnecessary barrier for women. It's already difficult enough to fit into some male centric industries and having PPE that does not just distract you all the time. It's just, an unnecessary problem. Right. So um, let's explore that a little bit, if you don't mind, the confidence thing. So you, what is, what is it about, in your mind, what is it about having, you know, sort of the right shoe or the right, whatever PPE it is, and, and, and that sort of adding to or complementing your, your confidence? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we all know that um, people people make a judgment within the first couple of seconds of them seeing you. Like when, when you walk into a room, 
Um, and being looking professional is incredibly important. And what is even more important is not to look professional, but to feel feel confident. Like when you wear the clothes that you feel comfortable and confident in, you will express that confidence to others through your mm. communication, through mm. your posture. Um, so, and it starts with safety shoes. Uh, with I would say for women, it's, it might be a weird topic, but it starts with boots. If you have to wear hiking boots, you will look ridiculous wearing a nice blouse. So you're almost forced to dress down and wear a hiking jacket, like a nice comfortable hiking jacket with your tennis shoes or your hiking boots. But when you walk into a room and everyone else, like most men wear their nice button down shirts and you're the only one who looks out of place, it's not, uh, does not make you feel, feel good overall. Right. So that's the whole concept of as soon as you can like the boots you you wear it opens up so many possibilities of um wearing other clothing and helping you to feel more confident and actually feeling your, like yourself like when we can be our authentic selves we are most successful in the workplace right. instead of dressing um dressing like uh, your dad so many women bring up that example They're like I finally don't have to, to look like I'm wearing my dad's clothes to work. So, okay. So, um, the prototype process, um, how did you, how did you go down that, that road on? I'm trying to like, who did you hire? How did you, how did you, who did you work with? What was the collaboration like? I'm trying, trying to get, you know, you had this idea in your mind, you have an engineering background, of course. But I'm just, I think people are curious about how you go from a design and a business plan to actually making your first shoe. Um, it's, it's probably not something most people have an awareness of how that actually goes. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as I mentioned earlier, after learning everything about safety standards, I took those and worked with a shoe designer, um, a freelance shoe designer who had a lot of experience with different brands. And we found the perfect middle ground of fashion and safety. So a part of it is you go to a shoe store and you buy, you may buy five different pairs of shoes and you say, I like the element of this boot. I like the element of that boot. So you use all those different elements to put the design on paper. And then of course the materials, they will vary from your everyday boots because you need to have a slip resisting outsole you need to build in a protective toe cap and depending on what other safety standards you're building in like electric hazard resistance or ESD static dissipation, which helps you to conduct your static charge from the body through the boots to the ground, the which yeah, is used okay. in highly flammable in chemical facilities where you work with highly flammable materials or microchips. So that has an impact on the material selection as well. And then once you have the tech pack, um, so called tech pack, you work with one or multiple manufacturers to tell them this is what I need. And they help you to source the different materials, put them into a prototype. Ideally, you will then have a focus group of women or like, um, I'm, um, I'm testing most of our boots, but I want to make sure that the fit is right for different sizes of feet. So once we pass the fit test, we, press the button on expanding it from one size into all the sizes we want to offer. So then it goes into the last development. The last is the portion that goes into the shoe and where the shoe is being built around. It's made of plastic material. Um, and yeah, it goes from there. After that, uh, it goes into production, which, which is always exciting. Once once you get there after many months of prototyping. Were the, so the shoe designer and the prototype manufacturers and then ultimately the manufacturer, were they was it difficult to find those folks? Did you have channels into them through some of your other work experience or how to, I mean, just trying to figure out how you find yeah. how you find the right people to collaborate with. Yeah, and this is one of the key key components and I think we have we're very lucky 
that we found the people we work with. Um, because since then, I've made a few really, really bad experiences trying to expand into the more work apparel space. Mm-hmm. Um, so our, we found our shoe designer on Upwork. She was a freelance shoe designer who decided to travel around the world. <laughs> so she was working from a different country um, every time we had a conference call. But what mattered is she had a lot of experience. She was reliable. She was always on time and she delivered what we needed to do. So I did not care if she's calling me from Portugal or from Brazil. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. And then the way we found our manufacturer was we went to um, to Mexico and they had a issue there. And like we talked, Finnish was amazing until I went to Mexico and tried to talk to footwear manufacturers who use very specific language and very specific terminology. So at that fair, we we met uh, three to four different manufacturers and set up meetings with them, pitched our idea. And I was surprised that all four really wanted to work with us. And we selected one that we felt was the best fit. Okay. And was um, let's talk about the shoes. So you have um, different, what have you got? The, the Nova, the Omega, and the Gravity. I don't know if those are the only three brands that you have, or maybe they're not brands. I'm not sure. But Models, you, yeah. Yeah, talk, talk to, t- tell me about the, the actual shoes and their cool names and what, they, what, what the inspiration or the feeling is around them. Yeah, for sure. And I have some, some in the back. I will show you our latest limited release. So um, we launched with the Gravity um, in in a classic black and cognac brown. This is a limited release that we just announced and has been developed based on our customer requests. So the this is a perfect walkthrough boot. So this is meant for someone who spends most of their time in an office in meetings and then once in a while has to walk through the shop floor to either get to a different conference room, talk to the team of operators to quality control. So it features a steel toe cap, a slip resisting rubber outsole, and a heel that is based on Canadian standards. The US does not have standards for heel height yet, but we're we're working on it. And then after that we decided to design the next boot, also based on customer requests that has um, a higher like boot shaft for ankle support, has an electric hazard certification and a built-in protective toe cap. And we just finished the design of a completely brand new model that will be released um, actually tomorrow, which is a metatarsal boot. Let me see, I have one here. Yeah. There it is. So this boot, this was one of the most challenging projects that we had so far. So it does not only have a protective steel toe cap, but also um, a met guard that All protects the, way up your foot. the metatarsal yeah. bones. And it's internal. It's made from an open cell foam material that is flexible during rest and hardens during impact, protect, creating a protective shield. So this boot has been requested by women who work in heavy industries um, like. John Deere, Caterpillar, who work in in weld shops with heavy right. heavy equipment. Yeah, I'm thinking steel mills and yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, by the way, um, you can't. You have to watch the Zoom or the uh, the YouTube video for to see what she's showing you. But these shoes are, they look like shoes you'd wear to a club. I mean, that's. <laughs> I don't know if I'm dating myself by saying that, but that's what they look like to me. They look like something you'd wear out. Like they're very, yeah, yeah they're, they're super pretty. They're very, very Thank nice. You. Yeah. So this is, that's the beauty. You can wear your boots to a meeting, go out to the shop floor or job site if you work in construction. And then if you have a meeting with clients or a happy hour with your friends and coworkers, you can go straight to a bar and or restaurant and feel feel good all the time. So um I want to go into more but it, 
as long as we're here, I want you to, I'd like you to tell people where they can connect with you and where they can find your shoes. Um, yeah. Um, so we, we are an e-commerce business. So if you go to xenaworkwear.com, you can find our website and Xena spelled X-E-N-A. So we have all of our products there. Um, if you're in the Milwaukee area, send us an email. I'm always happy to meet for a coffee and do a personal try on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have free returns and exchanges. We make the process as easy as possible to make sure you get your shoes safely. If you don't like the fit, feel free to send them back and we'll make sure we'll find the perfect size for you. And what is your email address, Anna? It's Anastasia um, at xenaworkwear.com. Anastasia spelled A-N-A-S-T-A-S-I-A. Okay. So um, now that we have that out of the way, I want I, I would like to get into how you actually got the business off the ground so people understand that story. So we've got the design. Well, first it's the frustration, then it's the idea, then, and I, this isn't probably the whole path, but then it's the, the, the designer, then it's the prototypes, selecting a manufacturer. Okay. So now you have a shoe. Now you have to make it and you, that takes money and you have to market it and that takes money and you have to do all these things. So how did you get the business off the ground? Yeah. Uh, you're asking, it sounds like you have a lot of experience starting a business. There's so much that goes into this. (laughs) Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Um, so we uh, we got accepted into before we launched we got accepted into an accelerator program called called G Beta and it's part of a national program generator where the for us it was a seven week program where they helped us to get uh, to achieve five of our goals and one of them was to actually launch the business have the website launch launch the business and because I had to commit to all of those mentor sessions and introductions to investors that was the time for me to quit my full-time job because it got very overwhelming. And I thought if I try to do everything in parallel, I might not, I might never take this business off the ground. So that was one of the hardest decisions to call my boss and say, I have to quit and give this a a try. And through this, um, through this program, we get introduced to many different investors and most of them said, this is ridiculous. I worked in manufacturing. I didn't even know that this is a problem for women. In many cases, the investors are men and don't really understand the market. But um, I think one or two months in, we received a term sheet from an investor who really believed in our mission, connected us to other amazing people. And uh, we decided to take the seed round. So we raised 750000 last year in August, which helped us to move a little bit faster, um, hire a few people, work on multiple product designs in parallel. So, and now we're getting to the point where we started thinking about a serious A fundraising. And most of the people listening might not know what an accelerator is. Um, So can you just, from your experience, tell us what an accelerator is and the value that you got out of being able to participate in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there, there are different types of accelerators across the United States. And I would, anyone who is exploring to start the idea of starting a business, I would highly encourage them to do some research about accelerators. Some target specific industries. Our accelerator program was industry ag- agnostic. So I will share about generator first. So what they do is you have to apply, you have to pitch, if you get in, you will get a hundred thousand dollars and they will take an equity of your business, I guess a small percentage of your business. If you're starting out and you don't have any capital, I think this is a really nice way to get started because you will um that program lasts three months. So they will connect you to many different mentors who will help you solve your problems, grow your business. They will make very good introductions to potential investors that you can then um, utilize to raise the amount of money you actually need. Not not a hundred thousand sounds a lot initially, but if, depending on the business that you want to build, it might not be enough to 
to execute your full vision. So yeah, and that's what they do. And after that program, it's all on you and it's on you to maintain those relationships with all the people they introduce you to and the investors they connect you to. And overall, I had an amazing, amazing experience with, with Generator um, and would recommend it to anyone else. And what kind of feedback, uh, like I, I see the reviews are all really good on your, on your website and that's got to feel tremendous, but what kind of, what, what are people telling you? What are women telling you about their experience actually, you know, wearing your shoes in their environment? Yeah. Um, the, what the reviews are saying is in most cases is, Thank you so much for finally solving this problem. And I feel so much more confident working either in manufacturing or construction or um, there are other industries like uh, the film industry. And we discover many other industries that we haven't even targeted initially. So the main point of feedback is that they love the comfort of the boots. They love how they make them feel. And uh, they are incredibly grateful that someone finally designed something for women, that there's finally a company out there that is, that cares about women's needs. Hmm. You know, and the, the, that's fantastic, by the way. The other thing I'm thinking about, you, you mentioned, you know, the, the, um, I think it was the gravity or no, no. Yeah. The grab, one of the gravities is for women who, you know, occasionally go on the shop floor, for example. And I know one of the things I've, I think, I've witnessed with, with, you know, women and the shop is that because of what you said early, you know, where you have to sit down and change into your work boots and you tend not to visit the people who work in the shop as often as they might deserve, or you might need to, in order to, you know, really engage and collaborate and get the benefit out of everybody's experience and skill set. But you're, you know, if you're not, if it's sort of a hassle, I guess, for you to get down there um, or get out there, you, you, you know, you just don't do it as often. And so you, it's almost like it promotes teamwork to have a better, to have a shoe that you can wear all the time. Like, yeah. Right. Mike, I mean, you, you bring up a very good point that I have not mentioned yet, which is when, when you have safety shoes that you wear all the time, it will increase your, probability like to go out on the shop floor because that was another issue that we encountered many women like hated their boots so much that they sometimes avoided going out there and it is so important to build those relationships with the yeah. people on the shop floor like you cannot send them a text or call them it's like the face-to-face -face time is so important to uh, to collaborate to solve problems to get the quality you need and to build relationships so having being being present on the shop floors uh, or construction site is crucial. And if you have PPE that you like to wear, you will most more likely go out there. And and another aspect is cutting corners. Like sometimes uh, people say, "Ah, I'll go out on the shop floor for just just two minutes. I will not change my shoes," right. which is a problem. It's a it's a risk. Um, and by providing PPE, people want, and it's not only shoes, but other gear as well if they like the way it feels and fits they will more likely wear it and cut less corners well i love what you're doing anna thank you so much for being on on the show today um i do encourage everyone to look at her website xena workwear x-e-n-a workwear.com um, reach out to um anastasia or anna on uh, LinkedIn as well as she gave you her, her uh, email address earlier. Um, you should, you know, if women listening, you really need to look at this and men listening, you really need to look at this, what she's doing and, uh, and not just help her and her company, but help your teammates and people, you know, by introducing them to this possibility that they're probably not aware of right now. So fantastic work, Anna. Way to, way to go. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Mike. It was such a pleasure to be on your podcast. Uh, thank you for uh, spreading the word about Zena. And I look forward to stay in touch. Sounds good. My pleasure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good day.